Contrast paints? Normal paints? Which one is the most perfect? Hello friends, thank you for joining me for another video. This week we might be about to cause a little bit of controversy because I'm finally going to take my turn in the chair to talk about contrast paints. Now, it's no secret if you follow me that I don't use these things super often. They definitely make it into my work, but the actual contrast painting method is more what I want to look at today. So not so much using contrast paints amongst other tools to produce certain effects, but what I'm really going for here is a comparison between the start to finish approach of painting a miniature with contrast and with traditional paints. Now in order to do that, I'm gonna need some controls in place to try and make things fair as possible. So I'm gonna turn you over to a friend of mine briefly and they're gonna to explain to you exactly how we're gonna try and keep this pretty fair. Hello, my name is Professor Thomas Scheister, and I have been asked to speak to you for just a few moments about some control measures for ensuring that this scientific experiment is conducted fairly. So, let us begin. First of all, we can talk about palettes. Now it is recommended that contrast paints are used with a normal palette, and so that is what we will do. However, most modern painters these days do like a wet palette, so for the traditional paints, we will use a wet palette. Next, we'll talk about painting speed and care. Firstly, I want it to be said that we will encourage the test subject to paint at the speed and level of care that they normally would, commensurate with trying to complete a piece of work quickly. What this means is that we will encourage the subject not to rush, but also not to dawdle. It means that we'll encourage the subject to correct the kind of mistakes that they would normally correct, but let fly the kind of mistakes that they would normally let fly if they were in a position where they were painting to a normal, battle-ready, trying to get it done quickly kind of standard. Nice and easy. Hair dryers. Hair dryers are definitely a potential problem. Not every painter has them. And of course they speed up the painting process massively by allowing you to dry your layers very quickly before applying the next one. We are going to say that for the purposes of this experiment, hair dryers are disallowed completely. Now on to the subject of metallic paints, and in both cases here we are going to ask that the traditional metallic method is used. Now this is because contrast paints do not include any metallic colours as standard. So if we were to attempt to do metallics with our contrast paints, we would have to do some kind of non-metallic metal recipe, and I don't think that is very beginner friendly, which is whom the contrast paints are aimed at. Finally priming and basing. And very important, but very simple, we're going to ask that both of these procedures are done off the clock, simply because they don't really relate to the process of the painting. They are just the getting ready stage and the finishing off stage, and they would both be the same for each miniature. So we're going to ask that both miniatures are primed before the clock is started, and that both miniatures are based after the clock is switched off. This doesn't include the blacking out of the base to reset its colour ready for preparation for basing materials. That can be done on the clock because it takes two fucking seconds. And thank you very much for that, Thomas. I do appreciate you uh, helping me out with it. So with the rules laid out and in place, we can begin. So let's first of all start with our contrast painting method. First of all, here's a look at the contrast paints that I'm going to use. I've got them all laid out here on a dry palette, as I was instructed to use a dry palette. I'm using Corax White as the base underneath them, and that's just because it's a good, easy one to cover solidly with. You will also notice that as we get into this footage, there's going to be a little clock in the top corner. I do want this to be a timed challenge, so pay attention to that clock. Uh, what I'm going to do, essentially, is time myself how long it takes me to paint the contrast miniature, and then give myself that as a time limit to paint the traditional painted miniature. I felt like that was the fairer way of doing it instead of just setting a limit, because if I set a limit, in the back of my head, I'm gonna be thinking about that traditional method because that's what I more commonly use. And so the limit that I set would be based on that, and that felt a bit unfair to me. So to actually start getting some painting done, the first thing we're gonna do is get some Basilicanum Gray. We're gonna get it into all of the soft rubber joint areas of the Space Marine. Uh, we're gonna get it onto you know the bits at the front and stuff like that. Anything that needs to be rubbery, basically, we're gonna use Basilicanum Gray for. 
And then any areas where we've had overspill, obviously we have to clean up when we're painting with the contrast method. The contrast paint has to always go over the same colored base or it won't produce a consistent finished result. So everywhere that I've spilt the siliconum gray here, I now have to go back in and clean up with Corax white before I can do my next stage. Speaking of my next stage, I'm going to get some Blood Angels red and that's going to go over all of the armor plates. Now this went on, um, it went on nicely, but it was very, very blotchy when it dried. So I did have to do a few coats of it in a few different areas, but we got it on there eventually, no problem. So that's absolutely fine. And when we got to the end of that, we again had to do some cleaning up with Corax. I also, in a couple of areas here, actually spilt into the Basilicanum Grey. And at some point, I would have had to clean those with Corax and reapply Basilicanum to them as well. I can't remember exactly when in the process I actually did that, but I did have to do it at some point. Okay, now that we've cleaned up again, we can get some Basilicanum back into the areas that are Basilicanum, get some red back into the areas that are red, and try and get all of our things sorted out and tidy and looking good again. That's nice and simple. Then I'm going to start using Black Templar for the bolter. I'm actually going to do the entire bolter so that I can use the Black Templar as a basis for the metallics. Uh, the shoulder pads will also get a coat, including the trims of them, that kind of thing. Again, stuff that I want to be black, basically. And I ended up needing a second coat of that Black Templar in order to get it looking solid-ish. It still wasn't great. And I think I may have actually, later on in the process, gone back and put a third coat on the shoulder pads because I just wasn't happy with quite how they looked. Once all of that black's done, we can get some Ethermatic Blue into the eyes. I actually really like Ethermatic Blue as a contrast paint. It's an interesting one, because it's one of the lower pigment sort of concentrated ones. Um, but, you know, if you just paint the eye sockets in white and then throw some Ethermatic Blue in there, it does produce quite a nice effect. I do quite like it. Next, we'll do our metallics in a conventional way. We're just going to use some Retributor Armor, some VMC Dark Aluminium. Uh, we'll shade the silvery parts with Nuln Oil, and we'll shade the gold parts with Raikland Flesh Shade. So exactly the usual metallic workups you see me do. Um, I'm not going to put any extra highlights on them because I'm painting to battle ready here. You know, I'm, I'm sort of trying to do what I would normally do if I was painting battle ready, and I wouldn't highlight the metallics for battle ready. I'd just highlight the flat colors. So that seems fairest. And then that brings us to this as a approximately completed piece. Obviously, I'm going to do some basing outside of time. But if you look at the timer, 1 hour 17 minutes, which is interesting. So let's talk about some initial impressions. Um, first of all, an hour and 17 minutes. That's actually longer than I thought it was going to take me. Um, why, we'll speak about, but... The point I want to make is just that I expected that to take me less time. My first important initial impression, though, is that whilst I was working through this method, the whole time that I was painting, I felt really scared to make mistakes, which surprised me because when I paint with traditional paints, I'm quite fearless because I understand that, you know, everything is correctable and it doesn't really take that long to make most corrections. But with contrast, because you've got to completely prime out the area, and what I mean by that, like you can't just spot prime out the area. If it's maybe, you know, somewhere fairly inconspicuous, you can, but if it's highly visible, you can't just spot prime it out. You have to reprime the entire shape and then repaint the entire shape, and this time not make a mistake. And I was so conscious of that that I was being really, really overly careful not to make mistakes. I also found that I was really scared to like wiggle my brush into the deeper areas, into the sort of, you know, recessed sort of parts that are hard to reach. Um, because obviously you don't have much control when you're doing that. And I felt like if I kind of wiggled into those areas, the chances are I'd probably splurge some paint somewhere that it wasn't going to have, that I didn't want it to go. And then I'm going to have to go back and correct it again, which is obviously going to take a long time because of previously explained reasons. Getting even colour onto a surface, onto a flat surface, was almost impossible. Now, I've been painting a long time, and I was really surprised by how hard it was. Like, even multiple coats didn't make it completely disappear. It definitely gets better when you apply multiple coats. It definitely reduces the blotchiness, but it was so hard to get a finish that didn't look blotchy on the flat surfaces. And that's going to be a problem if you're a new painter, because you're gonna fall into one or two categories. You're either just gonna accept that and carry on, 
or you're going to be extremely frustrated by it. Now, obviously, the first one is going to lead you to the position of if you just accept it and carry on and sort of think that that's okay and think that that's normal, you're going to sort of eventually reach a point where you realize, oh, no, that isn't. Nobody else's miniatures look blotchy. I, you know, I need to do something about that. So then you're going to end up in camp B anyway, where you're frustrated. It's just kind of how long it takes for that to happen. Um, and that feels really problematic to me because it feels like something that would be very off-putting to a new painter. It feels like something that would really wind me up if I was new to painting. You know, I've been given this whole new method that's supposed to be super easy and super intuitive and, you know, you're supposed to be able to kind of get into it with fairly minimal effort. Um, and then I'm going to find that I'm struggling with it and that's going to piss me off. Um, the black is another thing that I have an issue with. It took a lot of coats to get it to anything even remotely solid. And still then, it wasn't really black. It, I mean, it was solid by that point, but it wasn't black. Um, and my final observation was that they're very shiny and plasticky looking. Uh, and that I really, really noticed. Now, obviously, these are my initial impressions, and I understand that they are kind of all sounding a bit negative. Um, I want to be clear at this point, before we get any further into the video, this is not going to be a solid bash of contrast paints all the way through. It's me trying to be very, very realistic and level and honest about what they are good and not good at. And we are going to, at some point, talk about strengths, so bear with me, bear with me. Okay, now that we've got all of that done, I know that I have 77 minutes, an hour and 17, in order to do my traditional painted version, again, obeying the rules that we set out in the controls. So I'm gonna set myself a timer for an hour and 17 minutes, and I'm just gonna leave my phone on the desk in shot. So it's not gonna be one continuous shot. I thought that would take a really, really long time, and this is gonna be a long video anyway, because it has two fucking paint throughs in it. So I figured it might make sense to just, you know, leave the timer in shot so that you can see how time is passing but not actually do it as one continuous shot so let's look at how i did the traditional painted version now and you can see what you think by comparison okay so firstly we're starting with a miniature that's already primed in the base color this time this is one of the big advantages of the traditional painting method and it's a huge time saver um you you know obviously don't have to pre prime your traditional painting miniatures in the base color a lot of people do prime them in a different color and they brush on the base color, but you can, and most people will. You know, GW sell rattle cans that match most of their base paints these days, and Army Painter also sell a bunch that, you know, match a lot of the sort of base colors that you would typically use. So it's the most common practice to start with a mini that's already primed in the base color these days. Uh, certainly if you're, you know, speed painting, batch painting, trying to kind of paint to uh, not your highest standard, but get the miniatures done, which is sort of what we're comparing here because that's the fairest comparison to contrast. Another thing that I think saved me a bunch of time here is that I was able to start painting black onto the bolter, all of the soft materials, everything that was gonna be metal. Like, I, there was a lot of things here that I could just paint black in one go, in one process, and I felt that that was really nice for keeping things concise. So we get that done next. And then I'm gonna hit all of the red armor with some Agrax Earthshade. And this was the first painful stage of the process, because obviously I said that I wasn't gonna use a hairdryer here, I was gonna let everything dry naturally. And when you, when I was doing the contrast one, I sort of knew that every single step was going to take a long time to dry because I knew that I was going to be doing every single step with liquid paints and so it didn't frustrate me with the contrast one but with traditional paints because the paint itself dries so quickly normally waiting for this Agrax to dry was actually kind of agonizing because normally I would just grab the hairdryer and blast it and then I can move on to the next stage. However, the next stage is to now start retouching that red with Mephiston Red. So the same color that I had the spray undercoat done in, I'm just gonna start retouching it to get rid of the blotchiness on the surface. Now, you can panel line with the Agrax instead, and then you don't have to do as much retouching, but panel lining takes a lot longer than washing all over. So ultimately what it ends up coming down to is whichever way round you do it, you don't really save any time. So it's just whichever one you find less stressful. Panel lining I find quite annoying, whereas it doesn't really bother me to retouch the flat surfaces. So I do an all over wash and then retouch the flat surfaces. But we could have approached that either way and it would have made probably almost no difference to our finished time. Right now I'm going to start highlighting reds just by adding increasing amounts of orange. I was going to do my kind of textural highlighting here, which is sort of my middle ground between being quite quick, but also looking quite nice. But I decided to go more for sort of 
mostly edge highlights, uh, just because I think, you know, a beginner painter's probably going to do that. I did put a couple of little, you know, funny bits of different highlighting in, and to be honest, I was just kind of fucking around and experimenting. Um, I didn't feel very stressed at this point. I looked at my time, and I was like, oh, well, I've got fucking loads of time left, so, you know, I may as well highlight this and just have some fun with it. So there's a few different types of highlighting that have been expressed, but you know, it, it, it was all kind of just done with a, I'll mess around until I like how it looks kind of approach. Uh, and then obviously we'll do the metallics. Uh, again, same metallics as previous, same shades as previous. We'll get all of those in place. And again, we are gonna have a period now where we have to wait for some shades to dry. So again, this is gonna be one of those agonizing points where I would love to use the hairdryer, but I decided to make it fair and not use the hairdryer because you know, most people that were picking up their contrast paints for the first time probably wouldn't have had a hairdryer, so that seemed reasonable. Then we'll start highlighting up some blacks. I'm going to take Corvus Black and I'm going to just successively add bits of white to it. And I'm honestly just going to do a few edge highlights, mostly on the bolter and, and the shoulder pads here. If I'm painting for battle ready, I don't even tend to bother highlighting the soft joints because... It's not like, especially with something like a Blood Angel where the armor's all so bright red, you just don't really notice it. It doesn't really detract from the look. Um, as soon as I'm starting to paint to like tabletop plus or, you know, I'm trying to put a bit of effort in, then yeah, I'm going to obviously highlight those soft joints. But for this, I just did like the bolter really and the shoulder pads because that's what I would normally do. Uh, if you go back to my battle ready word bearers video where I batch painted a squad of five, that's exactly what I did there. I just highlighted shoulder pads and the bolters and I left all the soft tissue so you know that seems to make sense to me uh, and then for the eyes i'm going to do something which is probably going to annoy a few people and, and probably surprise a few others i'm going to paint them in with moot green and then i'm going to hit them with talisar blue contrast paint of all things and again this is because this is how i normally do green eyes on red space marines so this is what made the most sense and then we'll black in the base and finally we're ready to stop the timer and that will bring us to a lovely finish for this one so that was an hour and three minutes. And again, quite surprised. I think I've always kind of had it in the back of my head that this idea of contrast being faster than traditional just must be true. And because I don't really ever paint miniatures start to finish in contrast, I have never really sort of known definitively. But I was genuinely surprised that 14 minutes, like that's quite a big difference. So let's talk about first impressions after completing a miniature in the traditional painting style. Um, first things first, I definitely felt less worried about making mistakes. I knew that I had opaque paint to cover up with afterwards. I knew that my cover-ups wouldn't be difficult. And that meant that my overall feeling while I was painting was just more relaxed because I knew that I wasn't going to have to worry so much about those mistakes if I made them. Because of that extra bit of confidence, I obviously just naturally worked a bit faster and a bit cleaner as a result of not being so worried. So that's definitely an advantage. Um, another little thing that I noticed is that I didn't need to wiggle my brush deeper into those kind of recesses of the miniature because it was already painted in the base colour. So it wasn't like there was these kind of white gaps in the deep recesses of red armour, for example. Um, and that was really actually quite handy because it meant I didn't have to put myself in as many sort of difficult, annoying positions where I was going to, you know, make more work for myself if I made a mistake. Getting an even colour was definitely a lot easier. That's a big plus. Uh, you know, two or three coats of virtually any paint that I use, and certainly every paint that I used for this piece, and it was flat and it was even uh, and, and looking nice. So, so that's an important thing to, to mention, I think. Um, obviously, the colours are more solid and something that I really like as a result of that is I know how they're going to look before I apply them. With contrast, there's this thing that you don't really have a very clear idea of what the finish is going to be until after you've actually applied it and let it dry. And that's not, again, it's not great for building confidence. It's not great for making you feel comfortable and, and self-assured as a painter. So again, having, you know, solid opaque paints where I could very easily understand what the finish was going to look like before I'd even put it on the miniature is a big plus. And I think that's going to be a huge plus to a new painter. And then I suppose the last one is, you know, quite obviously they were less reflective, more realistic looking. Uh, you know, that kind of is what traditional paints are like. So I prefer that. Um, and I think a lot of people probably do prefer that. But if you 
never know any better. If you come straight into the hobby, I recommended the contrast method, do nothing but the contrast method, you're only ever going to really see these kind of glossy miniatures and you may sort of start to feel in your head that you just don't mind that and that that's not a thing for you. For me, it's definitely a thing. Um, and you have to bear in mind, like I started really seriously getting into painting in the 90s. And back then, all of the original sort of V1, V2 Citadel paints dried really glossy and it was really hard to take the sheen off of them. Uh, and we didn't use varnishes then either. So, you know, I started out just accepting glossy, plasticky looking paints and, you know, still now, further down the line, 20 odd years in the future, um, I'm really glad for solid matte or, you know, matte or low satin finishes. Uh, they make a big difference for me and I really strongly prefer them. So we do now need to kind of make a direct comparison between the two, but before we do that, first of all, I just want to put both of the miniatures that we painted onto a Lazy Susan so that you can take a look at each of them and, you know, just get a direct side-by-side -side idea of how they look. So let's roll that first of all. Okay, so my first point of comparison between the two is time difference. And I think this is an important, it's going to be an important one, certainly for your beginner painter, but also your slightly more veteran painter who's kind of starting to approach contrast paints and wants to use them. Time difference is going to matter to most people because these paints, we're not using them to try and get really high end, super lovely finishes. We're being told that we should use them because we can get a good look in less time that's kind of how they're being pushed so that needs to be true and the traditional miniature took me 14 minutes less to paint now 14 minutes isn't a ton of time but it's important to bear in mind if we were painting say a squad of five and you know five is like my typical batch paint number so you'll see me use it a lot but if we're painting a squad of five the fifth one is almost free if we're saving 14 minutes per miniature. That's really important over the course of getting an entire army painted. I mean, I, I'm looking over at my shelf there at my Ultramarines, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven squads of five, um, which, you know, that's... At that point, the last squad, the entire last squad, is free in terms of time saving. Uh, that's extra time that I've got to spend working on a character, building a vehicle, something like that. So that's important. That really does matter. Um, and I think one of the key things with contrast paints is that if you're going to use them as a painting method, they should save time because they are not as good a quality finish. But we'll get more onto that in a few minutes. Because before I address quality of finish, the, the next thing I want to talk about is ease of use. Um, the contrast paint, it, it felt harder to control. It felt like it was asking more from me. And like you can definitely put some of that down to experience because I don't paint full miniatures with contrast very often. So, you know, it's safe to understand, to, it, it's safe to assume that I'm going to find contrast a little bit trickier than someone who's painting with contrast all the time. But then you also have to understand that I'm not a complete novice to contrast. I've been using it for about a year now just for specific applications that I think it's good for, not as a complete painting method. So I understand how the material handles, how it behaves and stuff. Like, it's not like I'm coming into this how a new painter would. So whilst you could say that because I don't use contrast, you know, I don't really get it or whatever, but I do use contrast. And the other thing you have to bear in mind is I've been painting, regardless of with what type of paint, I have been painting for a really long time. So just, you know, my amount of experience in and of itself means that I can adjust to using new materials very quickly. I mean, you know, when I first started incorporating oils into my miniature painting, the first time I used it, I got a good result. So, you know, are we saying that like using oil paints is easier than contrast paints? Well, I personally think so, but the vast majority of mini painters out there probably don't. 
you know, so what we have to understand here is the ease of use again, it matters because if someone who's experienced finds the product unintuitive or difficult to use, someone who's brand new to painting, again, that's a potential for them to become really frustrated. So the last point, and I obviously already alluded to this, is quality of finish. Traditional just, and you know what, I'm just gonna say it, traditional just looks better. Um, obviously that's my opinion, you know, you can't be objective about something like that, but I can't help but feel like a lot of the people who prefer, who, who say that they prefer contrast are people who care less about what their finished miniatures look like. Because if you're willing to just kind of chuck contrast on and not do all of the cleanup steps or not be as careful with the cleanup steps, um, then obviously, you know, you are going to get a miniature painted way quicker. Like, if you're if you're willing to just slap it on, um, then that's going to be a lot faster than traditional paint because you're not going to stop to shade and highlight each area because contrast, you know, as a painting method tells you not to. But when we're trying to be as like for like as possible, which, you know, when we're spending about the same amount of time and using the same restrictions and like, that's kind of what the point of this experiment is, is to try and be as like for like as possible. At least to my eye, it's very plain that the traditional paint just looks so much nicer. You know, the, the colors are, they're more solid, the highlights are more present, you know, obviously the, the contrast gives you sort of some natural highlighting uh, because it shrinks away from the sharp edges and stuff. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the highlights are always in the right places. Sometimes the highlights, as a result of that, end up placed in really weird places where a highlight wouldn't live. When you're placing the highlights yourself, that doesn't happen. Um, so the finished product that you get out of the other side of it, it, it just it looks, even when you've spent the same amount of time on it, it looks like it's got more effort in it. Um, there's a cheapness to contrast in how it finishes. You know, that shininess, that plasticiness of it? it creates what to me reads as a cheapness in the finished paint job and yeah you could probably fix that with some matte varnish but again like is anyone who's using the full contrast method gonna be doing that um you know that's that's definitely not a thing that most people painting with contrast paints are going to do so i think again you know it it whilst it is subjective I do think it's fair to say that traditional looks better because it's asked me for less effort and I've got a more advanced looking paint job out of the end of it. And, and you know, that to me is pretty cut and dry. So we need to come to some conclusions. Um, first of all, knowing the things that I do, having carried out this experiment, do I think that contrast is a bad product? No, not at all. Um, you saw in the traditional part of the workup that I actually used a contrast paint at one point. Um, there are there are a lot of uses for contrast paints. There are a lot of things that they do really well, and there are a lot of times where I'll grab a bottle to do certain things, but they are specific uses. Uh, they're not a start to finish painting method. That is not what I use them for personally. And I'm actually gonna do a follow-up video to this. Uh, I'll try and do it fairly soon, where I go through my favorite uses for contrast paints, the things that I think they're really good for. Because like I said, you know, in the middle of the video, I don't want this to be a bash against contrast paints. As a product, I'm not saying they shouldn't exist or that you shouldn't buy them. Uh, what I'm saying is that you need to understand what they're for, what they're good at, what they're actually gonna help you with. Uh, you know, the people that are selling the products to you are the most likely people to give you misinformation about the product because they have a vested interest in you spending your money. Um, whereas, you know, buying the product from an informed standpoint and, and knowing what you're getting and what it's gonna do for you uh, is something that kind of, you know, does require you to look a bit further afield and think a little bit more. Um, so, you know, as a standalone method, I would conclude that it is, it's a waste of time, effort, and money, which are all, you know, those are the important things. Uh, I think when it comes to our hobby purchases, those are the things on which we should be basing our purchasing decisions. And so if it's a negative net result in all three of those areas, then I don't feel like it's a good value for money proposition. But 
as a painting system, as a complete start to finish system of actually painting a miniature. Now, defenders of contrast paints, and you know, I understand some people will feel like contrast paints are under attack by this video, so I do feel like it's important to address this. Uh, defenders of contrast paints will say that on more natural, organic, and textured surfaces, that's where contrast paints really shine, and that they don't recommend that you use them on flat armor panels, but they, you know, recommend that you use them instead on more natural textured surfaces and organic surfaces and things like that. And that's an interesting defense because there isn't really an army that exists in 40k or Age of Sigmar that is all organic, furry, highly textured miniatures. Every single army at some point is going to present you with a miniature where that is not the case. Um, I mean, I mean, I was, the first one that came to my head was like Sylvaneth. Like, surely they're all textural, aren't they? And then I remembered like the lady that's on the giant dung beetle. Like, how are you going to paint the, that beetle with contrast paints? It's going to look blotchy as all hell because it's huge, wide open panels. You know, it's, it'd be the equivalent of like painting a fucking dreadnought with contrast paints. It's not going to look good because that paint is going to be blotchy and you're going to apply multiple coats and it's going to still be blotchy after you've applied multiple coats and eventually you're going to get frustrated and give up on it. And so ultimately, the, the decision you end up being left with there is, if I only use contrast for highly textural organic miniatures, in some corner cases, my army will be mostly those miniatures, and I can paint most of my army that way, and I can probably get some good results, assuming that, you know, what the defenders of contrast say is true. Um, again, it's not something I've tried, so I can't say it's true or false, but, but what I can say is, you know, the practical implications of, of doing that. Um, so say that, you know, 90% of your army works with contrast and gets a really good finish from it because it's mostly furs and organics and stuff. But then what about that remaining 10% of your army? You're then left with a decision. Do I want 10% of my army to not match the other 90%? Like, do I want it to look incoherent or uh, incohesive? Is that the word? Incohesive? Uncohesive? I don't know. Do I want it to look wrong against the rest of my army? Or... Do I want to use contrast paint even though I know it's going to make that miniature look bad? Again, going back to our example of the Sylvaneth miniature with the Dung Beetle, like, that's quite a pricey miniature. I wouldn't want to actively make a decision to use a painting method on that that I knew was going to make the miniature look bad. Um, and so I feel like that's a bit of a hollow defense because the vast majority of armies either have a good number of miniatures that are mostly flat paneled surfaces or are almost entirely miniatures that are flat panelled surfaces. Uh, one of the defences I heard was, you know, Age of Sigmar has more stuff that's organic and natural, and, and yes it does, it, but still not entire armies. Uh, you know, Slaves to Darkness are covered in flat panels, uh, Oryx, the skin is all very flat comparatively, you know, all the sort of musculature and stuff like that. Um, even the armour is, is quite open panelled, you know, the armour probably would look okay in contrast, but pretty much any army that I could think of. Um, you could probably make, like, Skaven look pretty good with contrast paints, but better than you would with traditional paints, in less time than you would with traditional paints. I don't buy it. I personally just don't buy it. I think that people that defend contrast paints, I think a lot of them, unfortunately, I think they defend contrast paints because they bought into it when it first came out, and they don't want to feel like a fool. Uh, and I know that's it's a bit of a harsh thing to say, but like we've all been put in that position, right? We've all been put in that position where we've backed something, believed in it, and then gone, oh shit, this actually isn't as good as I thought it was. Um, you know, Fallout 76 was like that for me. When Fallout 76 first came out, I was super excited about it. I was like, this game's going to be fucking rad. Give it a chance. Give it a chance. Don't worry. You know, give them time to develop it. Um, it stayed shit. And, you know, no one liked it as a result. And, yeah, I felt silly for backing it. But, you know, at the end of the day, I did. And what can you do about it? But if you're, you know, defending contrast paints by saying, you know, oh, they're great for this, they're great for that, they're great for this, they're great for that. But you actually know deep down that they're not. What you're really doing there is kind of a disservice to new painters. It's actually pretty unfair. And it's a bit shitty of you to do that. So... This is why I feel like it's important to make a video like this, is because we need to make sure that beginners, the people that these products are aimed at, are getting the best start possible to enjoy the hobby and have the most fun and the least stress and, you know, really have a good time with it. Um, and the last point that I want to make is that 
whilst grasping you know the base level understanding of how to use contrast paints is very simple it is really easy and intuitive to you know just say paint this area in a light color and then cover it all over with this paint there's no there's no minutia to it it's very straightforward and that obviously does make it very attractive to beginners um, because there's not a lot to physically learn the mechanical skills you need to learn to apply it are really minimal but let me ask you if you're a new painter and you you know go in with just contrast what happens when you reach a point where you want to start elevating your paint jobs um, if you've only got contrast paints you're going to be in a couple of there's a couple of different scenarios you end up sort of backing yourself into um, one you end up just very limited you want to push your paint jobs further but you've only got contrast paints so you try to start doing more advanced contrast stuff that's kind of all you can do is more advanced contrast stuff and, and, and like you know there are um, more advanced contrast things you can do that look great so that's not you know that's not nothing but that's all you can do um, there are certain things that kind of contrast can do and normal paint can do and so you could start to incorporate those into your repertoire but every case that I can think of um, it's almost always actually harder with the contrast paint the traditional paint actually is better at doing the job so you know things like wet blending for example um, I've definitely seen contrast paint wet blending as a thing uh, and that's you know it's it's cool it's interesting as a concept to, to wet blend with contrast paint but fuck me it's so much harder than it is to do with normal paint and it doesn't look better like it's different but it's not better so like is it worth spending that time to learn is that a worthwhile investment of your hobby energy and time i personally don't think so uh, and the last scenario that you end up in is you just have to start introducing traditional paints in which case you're gonna then spend a bunch of money on a whole new bunch of traditional paints um and you can see behind me here you know like there's there's a lot of paints behind me um and there are some contrast paints there i've got about i think i've probably got about 12 of them uh and they're the ones that i think are you know the most usable or the most interesting or that i have specific workups that i can do stuff with and again like i said i'm gonna make a video going over the things that i do use contrast for uh, but the vast majority of that paint is is traditional paint and has been accumulated over years you know uh, if you're a new hobbyist and you've been painting say six months and you go okay I'm starting to feel a bit limited by contrast I want to you know I want to expand and you've spent like 70 80 quid on contrast paints by this point because they're not fucking cheap remember they're like four pound a pot you know they're not cheap um, so let's say you've spent like 70 80 quid you've got about 20 contrast paints 15 or 20 contrast paints and then you've got to go out and buy a whole basic set of traditional paints and then you know whatever specific ones you need for the things that you're going to do you're probably going to be in for like another 40 50 quid again to get going with traditional paints now um you're also probably going to want like some washes some lamian medium you know you might want some dry paints you might need some metallics because you've not been using metallics previously like you could you could end up in for a packet whereas if you just bought that same number of traditional paints in the first place you'd probably be producing better results by now six months down the line like nicer looking miniatures in less time and you'd have spent less on your initial outlay and then you just start to creep in the odd contrast paint here and there where you find uses for them so you know to me it's it's a tricky one because i i just don't think as a painting system that there's anything attractive about it but it doesn't mean as a product that there's nothing attractive about it. So for me, traditional wins. Uh, I think that's obvious. And and I think that's going to be true for a lot of people too. Um, traditional miniature painting, you know, there's a lot more knowledge in the world that you can tap into uh, to improve your skills and your abilities. And if you're struggling with traditional painting, instead of just saying fuck it and switching over to contrast, I think, you know starting to kind of stick your tendrils out and figure out where you can find out and learn new things might be a better approach might get you more where you want to be with less overall arse ache um so what place do i think contrast paints actually hold in the miniature hobby what place do i think they have they are a thing that you should have in your arsenal definitely there is there's some stuff for which i consider them kind of essential 
But I think the time to buy them is after you've got a solid grounding in you know normal traditional miniature painting. You've been kind of painting for a while, you're starting to develop your skills and you want to try them as a tool to add to your arsenal to you know learn new effects, make certain processes easier. Um, that's where I think they're, they're good. I bought some of them when they first came out. Like I said, it was a bit over a year ago, I think they've been out now. Uh, so about a little over a year ago is when I bought my first batch. And, you know, I've worked with them on and off ever since, tried many, many different things with them, um, and actually really, really love them for certain stuff. But one thing I don't think I'll ever like them for is uh, is a start to finish painting method. So folks, thank you for, for bearing with this video. I know it's been a long one. Uh, I know it's been a lot of information in it, but there wasn't really a quick way that I felt I could do this that properly explained all of the factors. Um, and, you know, I, I didn't want it to come off as just another person hating contrast paints because that's really not what it's about. Contrast paints are great. The contrast painting system is a problem and it's a problem that we need to be telling new painters about so that they don't fall into a trap where they waste their time, effort and money. So folks, if you liked it, uh, click the likey button. Let me know that you liked it. You can obviously subscribe to the channel and enable notifications if you want to stay up to date on content that I'm releasing going forward. And uh, there is a Patreon if you wish to support the creation of this content. You can sign up to that from as little as one American dollar a month. Uh, and there's a ton of cool benefits attached to that, including a nice Discord and early access to things and, you know, all that sort of stuff. But yeah, uh, it's it's been an interesting chat. It's been, it's been a fun chat. Uh, I know this has been a much more casual sort of video for the most part, other than, you know, some sort of silly bits and more structured bits at the start. But I know it's been a little bit more chilled out. Uh, and that's because, you know, to conclude something, I think it's much better to just sort of spitball and be a bit more conversational about it so i hope it was fun for you folks and uh, and i will see you in the next one bye bye for now